Hi, my name is Sam Horn, and I'm with the technical support team at Pepperell & Fuchs. Today, we will be looking at intrinsically safe sensor configurations and how to connect inductive Nemore output sensors to intrinsically safe barriers. But before we jump into the technical details, why don't we start by looking at what intrinsically safe sensor configurations and Nemore output sensors entail. While working in hazardous environments, it is extremely important to limit all factors which could potentially cause an explosion or ignite other flammable material. These hazardous areas are denoted with class and division specifications depending on the severity of a potential explosion. Electrical equipment operating in these hazardous areas could potentially ignite flammable material, which is why an intrinsically safe sensor configuration operates at a lower current and lower voltage. Inductive sensors typically have either a two-wire DC or a two-wire DC Nemore output, and it is very important to denote the difference between the two. Two-wire DC Nemore output inductive sensors are used in hazardous environments due to their low current and low voltage operating systems. Typically, we'd see these around 5 milliamps of current at 8.2 volts. Let's look into what an intrinsically safe sensor configuration looks like. Typically, we would see an inductive Nemore output sensor operating 5 milliamps at 8.2 volts, along with an intrinsically safe current limiting barrier, some form of power supply, and unique blue connectivity. We would see the inductive sensor, or capacitive sensor in some cases, the blue connectivity directly mounted in the hazardous location, and then the power supply, an intrinsically safe barrier mounted in a safe area away from the hazardous location. To connect the intrinsically safe barrier to a power supply, we must find the power input terminals on the wiring diagram of the barrier. Here, this particular barrier shows terminals 14 and 15 as the positive and negative power inputs. The brown wire goes to positive terminal 14, while the blue wire goes to negative terminal 15. To connect the Nemore output sensor to the intrinsically safe barrier, we see that the wiring diagram of the barrier denotes terminals 2 and 1 as the positive and negative input terminals. The brown wire goes to positive terminal 2, and the blue wire goes to negative terminal 1. Now that our configuration is powered up, let's see how it operates. We have LEDs on the sensor and the barrier face to denote sensor function. Note that this is a normally closed sensor, which means that the LEDs on the sensor will turn off as soon as a target is detected. We can also see this operation on the face of the barrier under channel 1. Channel 1 LEDs should change as a target is detected. If normally open logic is desired, dip switches on the front of the barrier can be inverted to send a normally open signal to a control device, have it be a PLC, located back in the safe area. Intrinsic safety allows electrical devices to operate in hazardous environments. By limiting the operating current and operating voltage of these devices, a Nemore output sensor and an intrinsically safe barrier working together will prevent flammable materials from being ignited in the workplace. This will ensure safe machine operation. The very basics of intrinsic safety have been covered in this video, so please stay tuned in the near future for a more in-depth discussion about Nemore sensors and intrinsic safety. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns about what has been covered so far, Please feel free to drop them in the comment section below and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a wonderful day and thanks for your attention.